Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met in Sharm el Sheikh today Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the occasion of His Majesty's visit to Egypt. During the meeting, the two leaders reviewed the solid historic bilateral relations and means of enhancing various aspects of joint cooperation between the two brotherly countries in all fields that serve their common interests. His Majesty the King expressed his thanks and appreciation to the Egyptian President for his efforts in strengthening Bahraini Egyptian relations. For his part, President al Sisi welcomed His Majesty the King's visit to Egypt praising the brotherly ties and outstanding relations of cooperation with the kingdom and Bahrain's stances towards Egypt and its people. His Majesty affirmed the pride of Bahrain's leadership and people in the deep-rooted relations with Egypt that are getting stronger, stressing mutual interests in enhancing aspects of cooperation and continuing consultation and coordination in light of the regional challenges. His Majesty lauded Egypt's pivotal role in protecting Arab national security and defending the interests of Arab nations and their just causes in addition to Cairo's effective efforts to strengthen pillars of peace, security and stability in the Middle East region. The two sides also exchanged views on the latest regional Arab and international developments. The two leaders expressed their keenness on the upcoming summit between the leaders of the GCC, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq and the United States that will be hosted by Saudi Arabia. The two leaders also commended on the level of coordination and unity of visions between the two brotherly countries on issues of mutual interest and stressed the importance of exerting all efforts aimed at establishing peace, security and stability in the region, in addition to combating terrorism. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks and gratitude from the special representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa. In the cable, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak said he was honored to be appointed by His Majesty the King as his special representative. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King and guide him on the path of success in light of his royal directives and wise leadership to achieve further wide ranging development and progress in his prosperous era. The Council of Representatives Speaker Fawzi Ibn Abdullah Zainal met yesterday with U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, Mrs. Barbara Leaf, on the sidelines of her official visit, along with the parliamentary delegation to the United States of America. The meeting, which was also attended by Bahrain's ambassador to the United States, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, discussed means of employing parliamentary cooperation between the Kingdom and the U.S., in addition to coordination and issues of mutual interest for the best of both friendly countries. During the meeting, Zainal stressed the importance of the strategic partnership that links the Kingdom and the United States. She noted that the legislative authority in Bahrain is keen on providing the proper legal environment and supporting common views for the development of investment cooperation with Washington, stressing the importance of the recent launch of the American trade zone in Bahrain. Zainal pointed out the Kingdom's stance regarding regional and international conflicts and disputes, affirming Bahrain's adoption of diplomatic options, giving priority to dialogue, and following the approach based on finding political solutions. For her part, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a strategic ally of the United States and an active partner in the international community. Through its efforts, it is supporting security and stability of the Middle East region. She noted that the United States considered Bahrain as a country that advocates peace in the world, an oasis of unique diversity among different religions, sects and races, as well as a sponsor of religious coexistence, stressing the keenness to strengthen partnership and cooperation in all fields. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, announced the winners of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Prize for the use of information and communication technologies in the field of education at its 13th session for the year 2021, following the results approved by the Director General of the UNESCO, Ms. Audrey Azulai. The winners for this session are Initiatives for Inclusive Education Available to All, presented by the Central Institution of Educational Technology of the National Council for Educational Research and Training in India and the project Obongo, the largest digital classroom in Africa, presented by the Foundation Obongo from uh, Tanzania. On the award theme for this session, which is using technology to empower inclusive learning systems resilient to crises. On this occasion, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, stressed the great importance of this global award bestowed by His Majesty the King and adopted by the UNESCO. He also pointed out that the increasing number of contributions that con countries submit annually to compete for this award confirms its competence or importance in serving humanity through education and the great reputation it has reached at the international level. The minister explained that the ceremony, which will be held by UNESCO at its headquarters in the French capital Paris, in cooperation with the Ministry of Education in the Kingdom of Bahrain, will witness 
the awarding of the award to the four winning countries during the previous two sessions and to the two winning countries in the current session. The award winners are, were selected from 111 uh, nominations submitted by 58 UNESCO member states and eight non-governmental organizations based on the recommendation of an international jury composed of experts in the field of education. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Ben Rashid Al Zayani, praised the wise approach of His Majesty the King in consolidating the values of tolerance, human fraternity, and peaceful coexistence between religions and cultures and rejecting extremism and hatred. The Minister, in a statement on the occasion of the International Day for Countering Hate Speech, emphasized the importance of concerted efforts of the international community in spreading a culture of peace and tolerance and rejecting calls that incite hatred or incite discrimination, hostility or violence. He expressed his pride in the distinction of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the direction of the esteemed government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister as a civilized model in strengthening national unity and establishing a state of justice, law and institutions. In this regard, he pointed out the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to spread a culture of tolerance, peace and respect for religious and cultural diversity and promote responsible freedoms in all media and consolidate the rule of law to criminalize hate speech or intolerance based on regional or religion, sect, race, color, origin or gender. He also stressed the distinction of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a global model for coexistence between races and ethnicities, guaranteeing the rights of expatriate workers and combating human trafficking. According to the testimony of international organizations, the Minister of Foreign Affairs praised the lofty royal initiative launched the Declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain as a global document to promote tolerance and religious freedom, as well as the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and the King Hamad Chair for Studies of dialogue, peace, and interfaith coexistence at the Italian Sapienza University and the signing of the Abraham Accords. He stressed that the royal vision of tolerance and peace with its high human principles and values represents an impassable fortress to protect humanity from the scourge of hatred, wars, and conflicts within the framework of His Majesty the King's keenness to achieve a just and comprehensive peace in the region and to settle disputes by peaceful means. As Ayani affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain, as it shares the world's celebration of the International Day for Countering Hate Speech, affirms its adherence to its human values and its constitutional and historical constants in consolidating the spirit of citizenship, tolerance and moderation. Ambassador Muna Abbas Radhi presented her credentials as Ambassador Extraordinary and a Plenipotentiary of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Kingdom of Thailand to His Majesty King Maha Vajira Longkorn of Thailand in an official ceremony held in the throne hall of Dusit Royal Palace. The ceremony was also attended by the Thai Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister and a number of officials and ambassadors. The ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the King of Thailand and their wishes uh, for his country and people of further progress and prosperity. She also expressed her pride in representing Bahrain in Thailand and in contributing to promoting relations between the two friendly countries. For his part, the King of Thailand requests the ambassador to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and his wishes for the government and people of Bahrain of further development. He also wished success to the ambassador in her duties to advance the course of relations of cooperation and friendship between the two countries in various fields. The Kingdom of Bahrain was ranked among the top 10 startup ecosystems in the Middle East and North Africa for 2022 in the Startup Ecosystem Global Report. This report is one of the most comprehensive in research on startup systems globally based on a data analysis approach to research and development. This report is published annually by the Genome Emerging Systems Foundations in collaboration with the International Entrepreneurship Network. According to the results of the report, the location of the emerging business incubators in Bahrain emerged in a number of themes analyzed based on a number of successes achieved by recent and emerging companies in the UK. Bahrain has been among the top 10 economic systems in the Middle East and North Africa region in terms of financing availability, availability in addition to the presence of experienced local competencies and the kingdom has advanced in the blockchain space in addition to its previous distinction in financial technology. 
In addition to this distinction, Bahrain is among the top 15 ecosystems in the Middle East and North Africa region on the bank for buck scale, which measures the average amount of investment capital for startups operating in the technology sector. The report also highlighted the active role played by the supportive business environment in Bahrain to attract and support emerging companies with the kingdom as their headquarters and expanding to reach the growth stage through expanding or expansion planning. The pace-sticking uh, team at the Royal Police Academy achieved for the ninth time the first place in the International Military Pace-Sticking Competition, which was organized by the British Royal College at Sandhurst with the participation of 20 teams, and Corporal Fatih Nanji was awarded the best individual participant in the tournament for the second year in a row. On this occasion, Commander of the Royal Police Academy, Brigadier General Fawaz al Hassan, extended to the Minister of Interior his sincere congratulations for this honorable achievement that reflects the support of the minister and the keen follow-up of the chief of public security brigadier general al hassan added that the team participated in the tournament with full readiness and showed determination to win reflecting the outstanding ability of public security personnel their discipline and hard work he also noted that the academy had paid special attention to the team's training providing it with all the capabilities that qualified it to obtain this advanced position stressing that the academy will continue to participate in such international tournaments in our international news, Saudi Arabia's Deputy Defense Minister Prince Khalid bin Salman met with the Chadian Minister of Defense, General Dawood Yahya Ibrahim. During the meeting, they reviewed aspects of relations between their two countries and prospects for cooperation in the defense field, in addition to a number of issues of common interest. The meeting was attended by the Chief of the General Staff, General Fayyad Arwedi. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has praised Egypt-Russian relations during a speech at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. He said Russia is an important partner for Egypt in various fields. During his speech, al-Sisi added that Egypt and Russia are implementing large and ambitious projects that serve the interests of both countries, noting that uh, the nuclear plant project is one of the most important projects for cooperation with Russia. He said that Egypt will be a guest country in this year's forum session on the 25th anniversary of its launch which confirms the distinguished level that Egyptian-Russian economic relations have reached over recent years. The United Nations Special Envoy said a renewed two-month truce in war-torn Yemen that has given the population a sense of normalization is the first step towards a broader peace settlement. Swedish diplomat Hans Grundberg said the truce has delivered some humanitarian respect or respite to the population that is unprecedented in terms of the history of the conflict and from that point of view it also provides a scope and breathing space for engaging on a political settlement. The Yemeni government and Houthi militants agreed earlier this month to extend the truce, which went into effect in April and significantly reduced the intensity of fighting in a conflict that the uh, UN says has triggered the world's worst humanitarian crises. The conflict has killed hundreds of thousands and left millions on the brink of famine. The country has been gripped by conflict since the Iran-backed Houthi militants took control of the capital Sana'a in 2014.